my friends, Paisley and Glue here, and today we are talking about my main girl, Maleficent, here. I thought that I would kind of go behind the scenes and show you how it's all rigged together and kind of a sort of under the costume tour of how the whole thing was constructed. Let's get started. Okay, so the first step with this is that under everything I wore a camisole and a pair of leggings so that I could get dressed or undressed in the open if I needed to. It's always a little nice not to have to go into a bathroom with a super giant costume like this. So that kind of went on underneath everything. So I put my shoes on first and I wore some pretty high platforms. They were like five inch, sort of like knee high, lace up, combat -y boot, goth sort of boot sort of things. Quite comfortable because they actually weren't that much of a heel. It was mostly just a really tall platform. Then my petticoat went on at that point. So this is how tall I was with the petticoat on. You can kind of see the height difference because then the petticoat was floor length with those big old shoes on. So a couple of things about this petticoat. There's a couple different layers on it. This over train piece is a poly taffeta. So it's um, pretty durable and has like a nice body to it. And that I made the train be the whole length of the dress train so that it gave it a protective layer underneath. So when you're dragging it along on the convention show floor, I wasn't as concerned with the fashion fabric getting torn up by carpet or getting caught on things. Uh, so that's the sort of top layer is that taffeta. And then the bottom layer is actually a hoop skirt. So there is steel boning in this petticoat and then there are, it's kind of hard to see because I've tacked it all together now, but then I have two rows of organza ruffles that have fishing line in the edge to give it a little bit extra body. Sometimes when you have a hoop skirt, you'll see that hard line of the hoop skirt at the base. So I want to try to disguise that as much as possible. So with the ruffles and then the taffeta layer on top, it kind of helps disguise that sort of rigid hoop line around. And now the hoop allows us to keep that nice trumpet shape with the skirt, which is really what I was interested in. So I wanted to get really narrow at the hips and knees and then flare out in order to keep that flare at the bottom and not have it collapse and also make it easier to walk so it doesn't get caught underneath my feet. That's where this boning really comes in handy. I found this quite easy to walk in. It really never got trapped under me, making sure that the hem is sort of right off the floor, but not, not too short is kind of key for that. Um, but as you kind of walk, your shoes will sort of kick the hoop and then it'll sort of bounce out of the way. Petticoat. <clears throat> I'm forgetting how to breathe. So let me just have a moment here. All right, so the dress goes on over the petticoat. And before I zip it up, I wanna show you a couple of things on the inside here. There's a big long zipper in the back, which gets hidden by the breastplate, well, the corset, and then, then the breastplate that goes over the top. But I just wanna show you the um, inside here to make give the, the shoulders this sort of pointed aspect. I put something called foss shape on the inside. And foss shape is a, um, a felt fabric that starts out really flexible, but if you hit it with steam and heat, then it will, I don't know exactly what it does, something chemical. Uh, it sort of like compresses and gets harder and it's never really rigid necessarily, but it will hold its shape and you can sew through it. So uh, it was two pieces and then they're stitched sort of along the top of the shoulder and then I inserted them into the sleeve cap and then stitched the smocked section of the sleeve to the foss shape to make those sleeves. So here's our dress. We don't see most of the body of this because the breastplate goes over the top. So I was mostly interested in getting sort of a smooth, tight fit. And this is a, um, a stretch velvet actually, which I wanted to use because I wanted it to be able to be really snug over my hips, but so I could still move. But then I ended up flatlining it in organza. So that kind of made it a moot point. Uh, we can see that though here. I flatted the whole thing in organza, 
to give it a little bit extra body and then all the seams are all bound off and serged together and then the hem has a two inch wide horsehair tape sewn into the hem with then a facing band to cover that and then that is stitched to the organza only and the nice thing about that is then from the front so you can kind of see the line of where the horsehair is. You can't actually see any stitch lines because the stitches don't go through to the fashion fabric. And I really wanted that clean hemline in the front because as careful of a job as you could do with hand sewing a hem, you're always going to see those little prick marks in the velvet. So doing it this way, I could both get the hem to have some structure and also be invisible, which was great. The other thing with the hem that I did is I have snaps that attach the dress to the petticoat. So these are Whopper Popper sizes and I have them on little thread chains here so they have a little bit of play back and forth. So if, they, if the dress sort of torques in one way, it's not gonna make like a weird pull there as I'm moving. So after the dress goes on, then the hem gets snapped to the petticoat and that goes all the way around and again that keeps the train and the petticoat married together in one and keeps the petticoat as the base for the dress so that as you're walking the floor doesn't um, damage the dress. It doesn't quite cover this very last piece, obviously, because weird tail thing, um, but it worked pretty good. And then when I picked it up, if I wanted to carry it, then everything kind of came up as one, and that was nice too. The back of this skirt is kind of that like fun, changeable sequin material that I'm obsessed with, and I thought it kind of looked like dragon scales, and that was fun. And then I incorporated that smocking design into this tail base as well to bring that element into the rest of the design and then that's all backed with um that same taffeta that i used on the petticoat again to protect that and you can see i wore this around all day and there's no there's no wear on that at all so we talked about the shoulders this is a metallic silk chiffon and i actually used the right side of it as the inside because I kind of liked the reveal that that gave you with the metallic and I used the baby roll hem stitch on my serger to finish off all these little dagged edges which would have been a huge pain in the butt to do on a sewing machine with trying to do a little baby roll hem so that made that much faster and much easier and actually was kept it nice and lightweight too which was another point of that dress um okay so then over the dress goes the corset piece and this is actually what the uh, wing harness is built onto so we can look at that a little bit before we put it on and how i stitched that on so it's got holes drilled through it all of my various attachments straps holding it on and on the inside i have kind of bony hips that stick out and some like low back problems so I didn't want all the weight to be on my waist and like bearing down with the weight of the wings. And I also wanted to enunciate like a, enunciate? Is that what I'm looking for? Um, ela elaborate? What's the word I'm looking for? Like an hour, accentuate, accentuate. I was trying to accentuate like an hourglass shape. Uh, so making my waist look smaller and my hips look wider. So I actually built a little padded piece into the hips of the corset which is something that they often did in victorian times and that's how you kind of got that hourglass shape that actually worked really well i was pleased with how that how that worked out but the way this goes on and now this is where we run into problems because people are squishy but dress forms are not um, even though this dress form is smaller than me Measurement wise, I actually have a hard time closing it up. Okay, so that does close on me. And then there's a waist tape. And then there's also a tape that goes around my rib cage. 
I'll say it's the most uncomfortable part of the costume because it's really tight on my ribs. Also, the corset not being adjustable was not super fun to put on. But I wasn't sure if I could have the corset be a lace up front and have it be structurally sound enough to have it be then the wing harness because I was afraid that then the laces would give and it would sort of like want to fall back on my body. So I would say that's probably, I should have figured out some way to do that. But anyway, um, then the other thing, so the corset goes on and then these straps, obviously like this is kind of exposed. So the straps actually are hidden underneath the shoulders of the dress. So they lace through here and I have a little bit of, it's like bike short padding. I'm blanking on what that's called. But that slides underneath and then comes out another hole in the front. Okay, so the shoulder straps were not horribly uncomfortable and they definitely help keep the wing harness from pulling backwards on your body, which is, if you've ever worn wings before, one of the major issues that they, they wanna fall backwards and then that's really what makes it super uncomfortable. So there's our wing harness. The corset itself is made out of um, two layers of canvas and steel boning and is bound off. I have like a steel busk in the front, which is really rigid and um, bound off with bias tape. It's not like horribly boned. There's not like a ton of bones. There's a lot more right in the back because I wanted that to be really rigid. So these are some, you know, you go to the hardware store, you stand in the PVC conduit aisle and you sort of pick out different parts that you think might work for yourself. Um, so these were two conduit boxes that cut off the, there's sort of a plate here that I cut off to make it as uh, flush to the body as possible. Ended up adding this little attachment in the middle just to keep the wings from doing this. And we also added a piece of a plastic conduit holder here that's hand stitched onto the corset, again, to try to keep the wings from pulling back as much as possible. There's also a little stopper under here that keeps the wing from falling too far down. And we also have drilled a hole on the side here that we have uh, cut, bought some timber pins. There's sort of a long screw end that we sort of just cut off here. And there are corresponding holes in the PVC base of the wings. And when you line up the hole, then we push that pin all the way through and when the wing is down in the slot, then it locks the wing in so it doesn't rotate, which is also a problem I have had in the past. So we'll show you that when we put the wing actually into the harness. Okay, so there is the corset piece. And the last thing that I will do before putting on the breastplate is this is my neck piece and it opens with magnets in the back. I've got some magnets that are embedded into the foam here and there's this piece that kind of covers that. And I've also got another set of magnets on a little fabric flange. So those hook to the back and then the little cover covers the collar. So I can easily put this on myself because the magnets sort of just go to where they want to live. And that fits very snugly around my neck. There was a lot of gradual shaving down of this part as I sort of realized that I needed more movement than uh, I wanted it to be pretty high up under my face, but I sort of underestimated comfort wise what I could actually handle. So here is the breastplate and this is where the dress form starts to become really problematic because it really doesn't fit on the dress form at all because it's just not like an actual body shape and it doesn't squish and it's not great. Um, but you can see how this opens in the back. This is all just Velcro. And this is all covered eventually by the spine piece. It doesn't look super beautiful on the inside. You can also see we had to have this sort of weird, sort of had to bump out there to clear that um, little attachment. But that's all covered up later and we don't see that. But I do wanna show you how I 
used some different techniques here. So this is all EVA foam, but I have a couple um, pieces of spiral steel boning that are keeping this front piece flat. There's another piece that's sort of embedded underneath here, and that keeps my point at the top and the bottom. Gives it a little bit of rigidity and a little bit of um, strength so it doesn't sort of flap around. The rest of this is all EVA foam. This is covered in two different kinds of vinyl. And this is all foam that's been woven in and out to make sort of a Celtic knot sort of feeling. It's foam bevels that I cut into shape and then sanded down. And this is warbla in strips and then warbla that's been sort of formed into these sort of viney pieces over the bust cups. So let's see how well we can get this to fit on here. So the way this actually fits on my body is that these Velcro pieces here correspond to Velcro pieces here, like this is doing on this side. Then these holes split to allow you to put the wing harness in there. And then it does the same on this side and then that Velcro's over. But, and then from the front, it looks like this. Okay, so we can kind of see how that works in the back. And then I did get it sort of closed in the back. It looks less crazy when it's on me, but that's kind of how that all closes up, pretty simple. And then we are ready to put on our wings. And now um, my ceiling is too short to do this. So I have to lower this all the way down to get the wings on. <laughs> okay. So you can see as I'm sliding this in, I kind of have to do it at an angle to clear the ceiling, which is not easy. Okay, there we are. That slides down. And then to get the pin in, so you need to find the corresponding hole. Oh, there we go. Okay. Again, when it's not on me, a little hard. I might not be able to get this with the way that this is fitting. Okay, so a little hard to wrestle those pins in there, but they're when they're once they're in, then you can see that we don't have a lot of forward backward movement on the wings, which is really nice for wearing. Let's talk about these wings a little bit. Uh, this is a PVC base, obviously, which you can see here, and I used uh, 45 degree angle connectors. So I believe that there's one here and there's one here. And then at the top, it's heat formed and then bent to get this shape here. And I think it only goes down to about here, the PVC part. And then again, using the heat to get this sort of organic bat wing angle, which besides looking kind of cool, um, I really wanted to try to structure them in a way where the wing weight center of gravity was based over my shoulders because using wings in the past that have been sort of behind my body, they're really uncomfortable to wear. So I was both trying to keep these as lightweight as possible and the center of gravity as far forward as possible. So that's why they're angled so far this way. This membrane part is a, it's like a double way organza. It's really, really, really stiff. It's almost like a mesh material. After we did the PVC, then I drilled holes through the PVC and then actually like hand stitched. And then uh, I think I used some hot glue to attach the organza to that. And then for weight purposes, I didn't want to use any more PVC because it gets kind of heavy. I used foam dowels to make the rest of these spine pieces. So that is what is underneath here and going down the edges and then smaller stuff here. 
Then it was a combination of foam clay. And then when I ran out of foam clay, I used Freeform Air from Smooth On, which is great stuff. It dries really, really lightweight. So that took a while to kind of sculpt that and then sand it down, try to get it smooth, all of that business. And then I used Flex Bond over the whole thing to prime it. And uh, that kept this transparent and also gave it a little bit of rigidity. So my goal with the wings were, was to keep them as lightweight as possible so they weren't super uncomfortable to wear. They were fine. They weren't like the most comfortable things I've, I have ever worn, but I could do a couple hours in them. Mostly you can't sit down, so that can be a little bit of a struggle. But the nice thing is that they come out fairly easily, so you can wear the costume without them, which is a nice option. I believe each wing weighs about three, between three and four pounds. So they're, they're pretty lightweight. The last pair I had were like five pounds each and, and the center of gravity was back here. So these are much more lightweight than that. So then in order to hide all of that harness business in the back, we have this sort of spine piece here that goes to cover all of that. So we'll start in the front. In the front, these hook on to these large hook and eyes that are in the front of the dress. I added some of the smocking just around the edge to sort of marry that all together. And this is the same organza that's been painted. And then the little spines are based on um, a wire armature that then is covered in foam clay and then sealed and painted. And I will say foam clay is great, I love it. It is really brittle when it dries, so I started losing a couple of my little corners there. And back you can see how this spine attaches. I love these big magnetic purse snaps because they're sort of like actual snaps. They just sort of lock in together, but they're in a pretty heavy duty. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And this spine is really lightweight because it's all foam. Again, it doesn't fit super well in the dress form, but once this all locks in together, it is not going anywhere. And that hides all of our kind of ugly closures that we have there and hides the wing harness. And this also flexes a bit too. So if I don't have the wings on, I can sort of perch on a stool. Um, and so because this hides all that opening, I can take the wings off and just have the spine on and you can't really tell that there's supposed to be anything going on there. So then the uh, last element besides the staff is the helmets, horns. This is also super lightweight. This is all foam. It's got some warble on the front here, but it's very comfortable to wear. There is a little opening in the back that opens with, again, some magnets with this little detail hiding that opening. I can pop it right off and on my head pretty easily. And then all of this detail is a combination of slashing the foam and folding it up and gluing and then laying corresponding pieces over and then these foam uh, bevels that I cut into sort of scaly, dragony sorts of shapes. It took me a couple tries to get the shape of the horns right. She has a very specific shape to these where they sort of come out and then come back in. But I'm really pleased with the way that this turned out. So that is there. And then the last element is the staff. Okay, so the staff, um, was sort of my like big crunchy moment at the end of the build. Um, I left it too long, definitely. And it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. It's fine. Um, I, so this does light up and it's supposed to pulse. It, it does, but it's sort of hard to see. This is, um, this is like Warbla crystals that form which are cool, but I had a really, I had never worked with them before and I had a really hard time um, making them do what I wanted them to do. Um, but other than that, this is just a piece of PVC that 
I used uh, masking tape to kind of make this kind of woody, woody texture to it. And I actually really like the way that it turned out. I kind of like my little knobbly bits at the end. It's nice to have something to do with your hands. So just to be able to hold a staff like this is nice. And then I've got some warble vines going at the top, which then is mirrored in the breastplate over here. So I'm really happy with the way that this turned out ultimately. I did do a lot of things I had never done before. I tried to incorporate my sort of a lot of my strengths, which is like fabric work with a lot of things that um, I knew I needed to work on, which was armor building and warble and things like that. I had built another pair of big wings a couple years ago when I made a hot girl costume and I wanted to improve on those techniques a lot, which I definitely did. I think my wing harness this time and the shape of the wings was um, way more successful in this, this go around. So that made me really happy. Um, the response at the convention was great. I had a really good time wearing her. She's my girl, love Maleficent. Um, she's always been my favorite Disney uh, villainess besides Ursula, of course, because she's also the best. Yeah, I had a really good time with this build and um, I kind of threw a lot of techniques of like foam manipulation and fabric manipulation in order to get the depth and the texture in the costume in order to find interest and detail without adding like a ton of bulk. And um, despite the struggles getting it out of my dress form, with uh, a good handler, I can get this on in about 10 minutes. I do think that it's a good example of thinking a project through. So I did a lot of planning before I started and you can see like the way everything is rigged together with snaps and, and Velcro and um, magnets. I really thought all that through before I built it and that um, allows you to minimize any last minute struggles that you have with how everything relates to each other. Yeah. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you have questions about things. Some of the techniques here I'm going to be doing some shorter videos on later that should be coming out in the next couple weeks. Yeah, let me know what you thought and I will see you guys next time. Also just want to give a big shout out to handlers out there. They have a really, really hard job. Usually they're also our friends, so they're sort of trying to navigate that line throughout the day while also trying to help us out. Uh, I had a really good friend, Becca, as my handler for this day, and she made such a difference. Total professional, and they really make all the difference as to whether your day is successful or not. So big shout out to them. They have a really thankless job of holding all your stuff all day and helping you look your best. So thanks to all of them out there.